I look at myself in the mirror and I'm pretty okay with that. I look into my eyes and I see exactly who I want to see and that's pretty, pretty much okay. Um, I can get on with the rest of my day, but I guess what I don't need is like the abuse, the disrespect. I don't need to be laughed at and I don't need the exposure to violence. The dominant cisgender culture or cissexist culture kind of wants us to go away, wants trans people to go away and go away in terms of like, we'll just look like a cis person. It's not what I'm going for. This concept of permission has been really quite interesting to unpack and it's something that I've only recently understood in the last two years. They've been constantly seeking someone else's permission to do that because there are all of these rules around what femininity should be. There's all of this policing around who can do it, who can't do it, what should that be. For me from a very early age it was like femininity and being female was something that I identified with from a for a very long time, but I was kind of thrust into having to be masculine, having to be a boy or any of these things. And so my relationship with my body was trying to kind of live this expectation of someone else. How I wanted to exist as a musician was as a, was as a female musician, but I was, but, and they were so interconnected. And so the idea of like coming out as the musician that I wanted to be also meant that I had to come out as the person that I wanted to be as well. And then five years ago, I started to perform as Simona. And so that was a really liberating experience, not only creatively, but also personally. And I could deliver these songs on stage that were myself and, you know, I was singing about stuff that made sense. 10, 15 years ago, when you're singing songs about you know, being beaten up on the street, but you're like presenting to the audience as like a six foot male. People are like, I don't understand, like why would you be scared about being beaten up on the street? And it's like, well, because I know that I'm trans, but like, I can't come out. Like it's terrifying on the street, it's terrifying on the footpath. It's terrifying having a cigarette out front of a pub, but it's not terrifying on the stage. I try and create this event that's somewhat dis that, that is somewhat dissociative. But after the first or second song, so we do get this connection. And that connection is a lot about the body and a lot about emotion at the same time. I'm writing a whole lot of stuff at the moment and someone said to me recently, like, it just sounds like it's marching music. For me, like, walking through the street is like, almost like kind of marching through a really hostile environment. Coming to terms with my own identity was not really caring about passing, just in terms of like beauty standards and what we're supposed to look like. And, but that's all about, I guess, the curiosity of kind of like a, a cisgender lens. And I don't, I'm not really kind of interested in catering to that. If anyone's like watched me play a game of football and I'm yelling for a football, um, I'm screaming pretty loudly for it. Um, I'm certainly not putting on a, a higher voice <laughs> for it, you know, and it's the same when I'm singing or if I'm broadcasting, like if I'm on radio or something like that. And it's like, I can't really kind of, you know, I'm not going to change my voice because like someone wants to think I should sound like a girl or something like that. It's like, well, what does a girl sound like? I'd rather people broaden their own definition of, of what a girl's supposed to sound like or what a woman's supposed to look like or be like or any of that kind of stuff. Every time I've ever tried to come out to anybody to be trans, and, these, and I've tried to come out to like the most important people in my life, the most important women in my life, usually. And the first thing that a lot of them have said is that um, you just won't find a relationship with anyone. No one will want you. And saying that to someone who is 18 and trying to come out or 21 or 26 or whatever is, or at any age, 
when it's reinforced like three, four, five, six times through your life or every time you end a relationship and someone says to you, you're never going to find someone like me who's accepted you. It just reinforces this this idea that, oh yeah, no, you're right, you know, or like, and so like the, the options for that are like, I have to stay in this really shitty relationship because this person is the, like, you know, the only person that wants me or I have to stay um, presenting as male and because it's the only way that I'm going to have a meaningful relationship. Like there are people out there that, <laughs> that love us dearly and have totally got our backs and there's so many opportunities for relationships. This idea that we're sort of unloved, undesirable and not wanted and not attractive or not interesting or whatever and that we're just fuck ups is not true. I think there's so much more to a person than just body image. It's sort of like a, a limited framework to look at the way that we connect with people. And also like reducing, I guess, like trans desirability or anything like that down to body image, I think is, there's just so much more. It's, it's, it's somewhat kind of reductive. I, I think that when you, like by doing that, it just only, uh, reinforces the kind of curiosity around the body for trans people. You know, the way I've been fetishized in nightclubs, for instance, like that was like one of the huge things that stopped me from really coming out and, and feeling safe in space was when I was really, I guess, experimenting with who I wanted to be. It was kind of like people were just like, so they thought that I was dressing up for some kind of sexual purpose. Uh, and that they, when they were the people that were fetishizing me, they were the people that were sexualizing me. And I'm like, no, I'm just like being myself. I think the critical mass of, of trans and non-binary people are, are really pushing against that. And so there's a, a much safer place and a much safer language. And it's not just about body image. It's, it's about so much more than that. My strategy is to put empathy into everything that I do. And that is the relationships that I have with people, whether it's football, whether it's music, whether it's anything like you can only really change from the grassroots up and the grassroots up is like the immediate conversation you're having with the person next to you, like have some kind of empathy for that story. Like, don't just give a shit about your own kind, right? Like, like care about the difference and care about um, the ways that we're different and care about the ways that we're connected. Advice to my younger self, you, you can give yourself permission to do anything that you want. You don't need your mother's permission. You don't need your father's permission. You don't need your partner's permission, your brother's permission, anyone's permission to do anything. You just need to do it.